Black Girls Podcast, a weekly conversation about mental health, personal development, and all the small decisions we can make to become the best possible versions of ourselves. I'm your host, Dr. Joy Harden Bradford, a licensed psychologist in Atlanta, Georgia. For more information or to find a therapist in your area, visit our website at therapyforblackgirls.com. While I hope you love listening to and learning from the podcast, it is not meant to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for joining me for session 239 of the Therapy for Black Girls podcast. We'll get right into the episode after a word from our sponsors. Parents, how many times a week do you find yourself asking, did you remember to brush your teeth? Enter Willow, the first toothbrushing robot for kids ages 6 through 17, created by dentists, loved by parents and children. With one press of a button, Willow does all the work, eliminating brushing mistakes and frustrations and empowering kids to take oral care into their own hands with a cleaning routine they feel confident with. My little guys have been using it for the past month and have really enjoyed how easy and fun it is and that it looks so cool. Try Willow risk-free for 30 days for the little and not-so-little ones in your home by visiting willow.com, that's W-I-L-L-O.com, and get $60 off with code IHEART60. An important part of gathering with friends and family these days is making sure everyone's been tested. These days, it's easier than you think. Pick up a quick view at home over-the-counter COVID-19 test for your local retailer. In just minutes, you can get results in the privacy of your home. Take 10 minutes, take charge. Visit quickviewathome.com for FDA emergency use authorization only. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Joy. Statistics show that Black women with breast cancer are approximately 40% more likely to die compared to white women with breast cancer. What's more, Black women are also more likely to be diagnosed at a later stage with more aggressive disease. Novartis created the More Than Just Words initiative to address racial disparities in breast cancer screening, treatment, and care. For information about how More Than Just Words aims to promote health equity in breast cancer, plus a talk with Grammy-nominated R&B artist Jasmine Sullivan about her involvement with the initiative, Visit iHeartRadio.com slash Novartis. Watch HBO Max's new comedy series, The Sex Lives of College Girls, now streaming. Get ready for another comedy series from Mindy Kaling, full of books, butts, boys, and four females who are a bundle of contradictions and hormones. These hilarious women stumble toward adulthood as they dive into new experiences, naked parties, airbrushed abs, and caution tape dresses, refusing to be shamed for any of it. No rules, no regrets. Watch The Sex Lives of College Girls, now streaming only on HBO Max. At the end of a year, I typically like to share some journal prompts for you to write and reflect on. But I realized we hadn't ever actually talked about why journaling can be so helpful and how you can get started. So we're going to dig into this today. Joining me for this conversation is Olivia F. Scott. Olivia is the founder and principal consultant of Emerge Alliances, an integrated marketing communications consultancy. She also creates community and workplace wellness experiences via her Freedom at the Mad Benefit Corporation. Olivia and I chatted about what journaling can unlock in our lives, how to get started with a journaling practice, and she shares a beautiful journaling exercise for you to wrap up 2021 and prepare for 2022. If there's something that resonates with you while enjoying our conversation, please share it with us on social media using the hashtag TBG in session. Here's our conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today, Olivia. Thank you so much for having me. You know how much of a fan I am of yours and of Therapy for Black Girls. So I'm grateful to be here, sincerely. You know, I think we talk a lot here on the podcast and just generally, and I know you use your platform to talk about the importance of journaling. So can you talk to us and give us a a definition of what we mean when we say journaling? I am going to be broad with that because I like to give us grace. I think if we Mm. say that journaling is only this, 
than people in general, they're not going to do it, right? If we say journaling is you have to write something down, it's got to be five sentences on the right hand page (laughs) every day when you go to bedtime. I like to say that journaling is just chronicling my thoughts. I find that I have different journals in different rooms and in my purses, I have them everywhere. And when I have a feeling that comes to me, I make sure I get it out. And so I have found that there is so much release when there's something that's heavy on my spirit, Dr. Joy, and it's something that I'm wrestling with. I haven't quite been able to get it to a friend. I don't want to gossip about it. Perhaps it's an unformed opinion around something, but it's a feeling that I have then I will just write it out. And I've been doing that a lot lately where it might be two sentences and it'll be like, this happened and this made me feel this way. I am not happy. This hurts. It hurts when I think about how this went down and I just leave it there. There's no resolution. Now there are sometimes journaling is a bit more formal. When I go on a trip, we go on vacations, And we may be journaling every single day, but I would never want to restrict us to it having to be that consistent and in a certain format. And Mm -hmm. we don't simply have the ability to do that every single day. When you're saying like, I have a different journal in lots of different places, right? It doesn't have to be formal or structured. What are some of the benefits of journaling? I think there is a benefit to us connecting with our inner divine, our spirit. And our spirit is telling us every day through our thoughts and our feelings how to conduct our lives. I really believe that. And so if there's something that's on your spirit or your heart or your mind and you get it out, you're able to, first of all, release it, look at it, acknowledge it, and then make a decision about how you want to move forward. And it holds you accountable to Dr. Joy. If you've written something down in your handwriting, it's like, this is how I'm feeling right now. Now, what we know is feelings change, right? So it may change mm-hmm. the next day, but this is what I'm feeling right now. This doesn't feel really good to me. And you can come back to it a couple of days later when something else perhaps happens and be like, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that. And I have a really great example I was married, wonderful ex-husband, wonderful, we're still friends to this day, but I'd had some reservations before we married and I was journaling really deep at that time. And that was that, we got married. When we moved from our apartment, I've never told this story before, when we moved from our apartment in Harlem to Jersey, I went back after the movers had cleared out our apartment and I just wanted to make sure they had everything. And there was one thing that they had left behind on the floor in our bedroom. And that was one of my journals. I flipped through this journal and I found all of my entries where I had been questioning, should I get married? Is this the right time? Is this the right partner? It was all this stuff in this journal. And I sat on the floor and I wept. I was like, you actually are not crazy. You were actually questioning this way before. And here you are in a trail of tears moving from Harlem to Newark, trying to make this thing better, but you were questioning it. So for me to answer your question directly, that journaling process allows me to connect for a moment with my spirit, connect with my thoughts. My thoughts are mine. I don't have to listen to anybody else. This is between me, myself, and my God. And this is how I'm feeling. And I want to honor myself by writing these few words about what I'm thinking and how I'm feeling. And I'll be able to hold myself accountable by coming back to this over time. If I keep having the same thought over and over again, I might need to do something about it. And if that thought is haunting me. So to Mm -hmm. me, that's the benefit of journaling is just getting it out and having a reckoning with it. I find that journaling is an effective way of being able to just connect You're pausing. You're connecting with your spirit and saying, okay, this is is where I am right now. 
And then that is therapeutic as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really cool, especially if you are somebody who has journaled across time to look at the different patterns that might come up in your life at like certain times of the year or maybe around your birthday. Like, I just think it's interesting to kind of take a historical look at like where you've come through journaling, because I think that just can be so telling. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I keep my journals. Now I'm kind of afraid to open them. (laughs) Because of what? Because if it's something that I had talked about doing or being, and I'm sometimes I'm upset with myself because I often do New Year's journaling Mm -hmm. and I journal, this is what happened. This is what I want to become. This is what I want to do, whatever. And then you come back to it a year later and it's the same things. Mm -hmm. It's like, girl, wait. (laughs) What is you really doing? What are you really doing with your life? And so I've seen that where I know for years Mm -hmm. I had patience at the top of my list for areas in which I wanted to be better. And Mm -hmm. then I had, I wanted to lose 15 pounds, still never lost them. It was the same things that were there that showed up time and time again. So I got to say, I think that there is something around journaling and commitment to accountability too, because Mm -hmm. you can journal all day long, but what's the objective of your journaling? The objective of your journaling personally might just be to write, but it might not be to actually affect change in your life. And that's okay too. So I think that for every person, we have to make a decision around what the objective is of our journaling. It could just be to write and just to kind of have some me time. You know, Olivia, you bring up a really good point because I think I've heard from sisters that there's this hesitation around journaling for some of the same stuff that you said, right? Like if I write it down, it makes it really real or looking back through old journals and then feeling super judgmental about ourselves for like what we haven't done. Can you share some tips about how to approach this with grace so that you don't find yourself at the end of a year feeling super negative about all the things you haven't done? Absolutely. Oh my God. Don't let the fact that what you you say today is going to impact you tomorrow. Don't let that stop you. Still write because mm-hmm. the writing process is a part of your therapy to become a better you. So I want us all to journal. That's number one. Number two, I would say this. I firmly believe that we all have a primary role in creating the lives that we lead. And with effort, we can recreate those lives. So if you see something over and over in your journal, Dr. Joy, year after year, month after month, you're still upset about something that happened and you keep talking about it over and over again. You have the power in your life to resolve it. You don't have to keep talking about it without any resolution to it like a merry-go-round. I would say empower yourself to create the resolution that you need to have so that you're not having that same issue or those same feelings. But that's why I'm telling you, if I write it down, oh my, there are times in which I hide from writing in my journal, Dr. Joy. There are times, right? When I'm like, oh, I'm so overwhelmed by it. I'm just carrying it like a weight in my heart, in my body. I'm carrying these emotions and that's not good. That journal becomes a heavy load barrier, if you will. They help me carry this load and getting it off my plate. And then at a certain point, I will make a decision on if and how I'm going to do something to resolve it. Mm -hmm. More from my conversation with Olivia after the break. This segment is sponsored by Novo Nordisk. It's easy to get down on ourselves about our weight. That's because we tend to see weight regain or lack of weight loss as a personal failing. But it's important to take a step back and look at what is happening culturally around us. For instance, the pandemic. For the past year and some change, there have been so many new things to navigate. The kids have been home doing virtual school. Your dining room has become your office. And the things that you used to turn to for relaxation, like massages and working out at the gym, have largely been taken away. With so many changes and the anxiety of the pandemic, it's really easy to do things like snack because you're bored or stressed. Chips are my go-to. Or opt to watch your favorite show instead of going out for a walk. I'm sure you can relate to that. 
But the bottom line is, a lot of us struggled with taking care of ourselves because there was so much happening. And naturally, it led to weight gain and weight regain. Struggles related to a lack of access to healthy food make it more challenging to lose weight and maintain weight loss. When it's easier to get processed foods than fruits and vegetables, of course this will impact how you eat and ultimately your weight. But there's also a science behind weight loss and weight regain. When we lose weight, changes in our body's appetite hormones can make us feel hungrier. This causes us to eat more and regain the weight we lost. And it also makes weight management that much more difficult. So it's easy to feel stuck in a cycle of weight loss and regain. In fact, people living with excess weight generally make seven serious attempts to lose weight over time. Seven. And while diet and exercise are our familiar go-tos and are important, they aren't the only parts of your weight loss plan. Weight management is much more complex than what we eat and how we move. It's physiology too, probably more than anything else. That's why it's important to partner with a healthcare provider to create a weight management plan that works for you. It should be someone you trust and someone you feel comfortable talking with because you shouldn't ever feel embarrassed about excess weight or let anyone else make you feel less than. Once you find a healthcare provider you feel comfortable with, you can work together to develop a weight management plan that is right for you. This segment is sponsored by Novo Nordisk. It's easy to get down on ourselves about our weight. That's because we tend to see weight regain or lack of weight loss as a personal failing. But it's important to take a step back and look at what is happening culturally around us. For instance, the pandemic. For the past year and some change, there have been so many new things to navigate. The kids have been home doing virtual school. Your dining room has become your office. And the things that you used to turn to for relaxation, like massages and working out at the gym, have largely been taken away. With so many changes and the anxiety of the pandemic, it's really easy to do things like snack because you're bored or stressed. Chips are my go-to. Or opt to watch your favorite show instead of going out for a walk. I'm sure you can relate to that. But the bottom line is, a lot of us struggled with taking care of ourselves because there was so much happening. And naturally, it led to weight gain and weight regain. Struggles related to a lack of access to healthy food make it more challenging to lose weight and maintain weight loss. When it's easier to get processed foods than fruits and vegetables, of course this will impact how you eat and ultimately your weight. But there's also a science behind weight loss and weight regain. When we lose weight, changes in our body's appetite hormones can make us feel hungrier. This causes us to eat more and regain the weight we lost. And it also makes weight management that much more difficult. So it's easy to feel stuck in a cycle of weight loss and regain. A great resource to learn more about this is truthaboutweight.com. In fact, people living with excess weight generally make seven serious attempts to lose weight over time. Seven. And while diet and exercise are our familiar go-tos and are important, they don't have to be and aren't the only parts of your weight loss plan. Weight management is much more complex than what we eat and how we move. It's physiology too. Probably more that than anything else. That's why it's important to partner with a healthcare provider to create a weight management plan that works for you. It should be someone you trust and someone you feel comfortable talking with because you shouldn't ever feel embarrassed about excess weight or let anyone else make you feel less than. To learn more about how to have that conversation with a doctor or nurse, visit truthaboutweight.com. That's truthaboutweight.com. Once you find a healthcare provider you feel comfortable with, you can work together to develop a weight management plan that is right for you. This podcast is supported by Glassdoor. At Glassdoor, they see the workplace as a work in progress. Building toward pay transparency, diversity, equity, and inclusion with tools that encourage open conversations among employees as well as job seekers. Find salaries, reviews, ratings, and more so you can ask for what you deserve. Then, get the inside scoop about companies and their culture and join a trusted community that gives you the power to grow your best career. We've come a long way in the workplace, and yet we're just getting started. Learn how they're creating a more transparent workplace at glassdoor.com slash progress. Ford Motor Company is committed to the advancements of new tech and breakthrough electric vehicles. Electric vehicles offer potential benefits like impressive torque, zero tailpipe emissions, and no more oil changes. Combining future-facing tech with impressive performance and capabilities to keep you connected. Like the 2021 Mustang Mach-E SUV, 2022 F-150 Lightning Truck, 
Available starting spring 2022. And the 2022 Maverick Truck. Available starting fall 2021. There are many affordable options available for you to check out with features like Ford Copilot 360 for safety assistance. Ford is making innovative tech more accessible for everyone. Head over to see our lineup at Ford.com. Built Ford Proud. Yeah, because like you said, the journaling could just be that you write it to get it down. There isn't anything that says you have to go back to the journal and do something with it. It could be that you just left it there. That's it. I'm all about being free. That's my whole objective Mm -hmm. is for us to live freer lives. I don't like to tell people, this is what it is. This is what journaling is. This is what you have to do. So, you know, you don't have to make journaling an exercise towards resolution. Even if you don't set out for it to be about resolution, I don't foresee from my life experience journaling that you're going to journal on an ongoing basis and not have some desire to make a change. Yeah. It's going to come naturally and organically, right, Dr. Joy? Right. Because that level of introspection and sharing your thoughts, like you said, like naturally you're going to probably want to go back to it and like figure out like, okay, what's going on here? I think it's really cool sometimes when clients will bring their journals into therapy. It can also be a great tool to like, further or open up conversations with your therapist if you notice that there are things that you keep coming back to and you want to bring journal pages to your session that's completely welcome and can be a really great way to move therapy forward so for people who are wanting to maybe get started with a practice even though it doesn't have to look one way what are some suggestions you would have for how we can maybe start developing a journaling practice if you've never journaled and you don't know where to start looking at a blank page is like as foreign as greek That would invite you to find Mm -hmm. a guided journal. That's number one. Number two, for those of you who either don't want a guided journal or who you have a relatively somewhat established practice, I invite you to make a commitment, a small commitment to some journaling time. And I would start off in a very realistic, conservative manner of once a week. And I would like us to make it into a journaling ritual, Dr. Joy, where it could be every Thursday night. At 7 p.m., I'm going to write and I'm going to have my bottle of wine. I'm going to have my candle lit and I'm just going to write. I would invite you, if you need to, like many people who struggle with meditation, like myself, where you set a timer that goes off, put the phone and do not disturb. It's a sacred ritual where you begin that way. And then over time, you'll begin to really look forward to that introspection and to that pausing in your life. And then you may decide that you want to do it more frequently. But I think journaling ritual is something that can be quite beautiful and serves two purposes of you pausing, creating some self-care, self-love for yourself, as well as you getting some thoughts and emotions and feelings out on paper. I love that. Do you have some prompts for people to get started with maybe this weekly journaling ritual that might be helpful? So, Dr. Joy... I do have a guided journal at Freedom at the Mat. So I have one that breaks down three different areas. And I'm happy to share some of those areas now. We've got soul, mind, and body. And if you get to a blank page and you're like, where do I start? Some of the prompts that I have in the journal support connecting with your inner voice. One of them in particular is What is something your inner voice continues to tell you to do? Is there a recurring thought that your inner voice is saying, Dr. Joy, you need to do this. Giving yourself that space to write and connect with your inner voice. Other things I would talk about or I do talk about are connecting with your thoughts. Is there a predominant thought that continues to come to you on a regular basis that you haven't done something with. I invite people to really connect with themselves. And I have a particular prompt where I say, name three words you would use to describe yourself. And from that, it would flow, who are you? Then we talk about relationships. Is there someone in your life that you just absolutely positively love? Name five people that bring you joy. Who are those five people? Why do they bring you joy? And furthermore, how can you 
fold them more into your life. It could be a best friend that lives somewhere else. Can you go visit them more? Can you commit to being a part of their lives more? Is it someone that you can maybe make a phone call to? Because what I know, and you probably do as well, is that we're all spiritual beings having a human experience, that our lives are all really made better by being around people that we love. It's not the things that make life go around. It's the people that make life go around. And so really connecting with, okay, you know what? I'm feeling some kind of way, but I should call Lisa. So writing that in your journal, like really connecting with your soul, what your soul needs. And a lot of what I try to do when I'm writing is really connecting with my soul, Dr. Joy. Not connecting so much with things that I do for work, but how I feel. Like this thing happened today and I'm so happy that this happened. This made me feel so good or this thing happened and I feel horrible that I did that to that person. I am going to go back and apologize to them, right? So it's, I try to spend a lot of time with my feelings, how I'm feeling today and what it is I'm wanting in my life to be different and how I can be a better person. And then the last one that I will share, which is, I got a journal, but I just offered to everybody, is body. So how is your body feeling? We go through life every day. You get up, you get out of bed, you go to work, blah, blah. But are we really paying attention to our bodies? How is the activity of our arms, our legs, our feet, our thighs, our hips, our abdomen, our backs, our neck? How are we feeling? And just doing, you know, body scans and checking in with how our overall health is and how we feel about our body. You know, our body and our physicality is what encounters with the world every single day. How do you feel about your body? Which is one of my prompts. How do you feel on a scale of one to 10? How much do you love your body? Do you honor your body for what your body offers to the world in the sense of what it allows you to do? So those are just some of the prompts that I would offer. Thank you for those. Those are an excellent start. So you mentioned a little earlier that you like to do some New Year's journaling. And I think that that's typically how we wrap up the year here at Therapy for Black Girls, too, is that I will typically offer some journal prompts for people to just reflect on the year. But I think that can feel very grand, right, when you think about the previous 12 months, especially in a year like this year, when there's been so much like chaos. What kind of suggestions do you have or where can we even get started in reflecting on the year that has been 2021? Well, Dr. Joy, will you allow me to take us through a little journal exercise? Of course, I would love that. Okay, so everybody listening, hey, so go ahead Find a journal. If you don't have one in your hands, go get a journal. It could be a notebook and a pencil or a pen. And just find yourself right now, clearing your thoughts. Let's do some very simple inhaling and exhaling. Very simple. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Honoring 2021 because we have made it through yet another year. These last two years have been absolutely, positively insane. And they have threatened to take many of us out and they've taken many of us out. So the prompts I have for us are number one, can you name one experience that truly brought you joy this year? What is something that happened? And I want you to think about it. And if you don't think about it now and you want to come back to it, that's fine too. But when you look back through January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and now December, what is an experience that brought you joy? Why did it bring you joy? How did it make you feel inside? Next, I want you to name an experience that might have brought you some sadness. Something that you had to confront or face. It could have been a loss of some kind that you had to go through because life is about the joy and the pain. So acknowledging both of those. 
And then as you think about the joy and the pain of your 2021, acknowledging perhaps with your eyes closed, perhaps with them open, that there is treasure that lies in both the joy and the pain. I invite you to look at your life as it stands right now, the day in which you're listening to this particular podcast, and ask yourself, are you happy with the life that you are leading? There's no judgment on that answer. Don't judge yourself, but just ask yourself. If you want to rank yourself and do a one to 10, fine, but are you happy? And then if you are less than a 10, ask yourself, are there any barriers that exist to you pursuing or creating the life that you really want? Knowing that each of us, we are creative beings. We were created out of creation. So if there is something that you want to become, something you want to be in this life, trusting that each of us was created on purpose and with a purpose, that if there is a gap between where you are right now and your total happiness, that you can create your happiness. That does not mean that it's going to be without work. You might have to make some bold moves. You're going to have to move fear out of the way. But thinking about what stands between your happiness and your best life. And as we close this particular exercise, I invite us to inhale and exhale as we close. Inhaling what is and exhaling what can be. So I always do my four, two, four breathing. So just inhaling one, two, three, four for what is, holding for two, exhaling four, three, two, one for what will be. That is my end of year journaling exercise. And I invite you all to really take the lives that we have been given by our creator seriously. What is it that you need to do to live the life that you were created to live? Thank you so much for that, Olivia. What a beautiful exercise. I think can be a great way to close out what has been 2021. Thank you for sharing that. More from my conversation with Olivia after the break. Ladies, have you ever wondered what the perfect bra feels like? Ashley Stewart understands that any bra you put on your body should be comfortable and well-constructed. Their patented butterfly bra collection offers technology specifically designed to provide support and style. Ladies, this is the problem solver for women with fuller breasts. Ashley Stewart's butterfly bra boasts a double back band to not only provide superior support in the front, but an overall smoothing effect in the back. With four styles to choose from in fashionable colors and available in sizes D through H, we could all use some uplifting and a little extra support these days. The Butterfly Bra is the bra that makes you feel confident and your clothes look and feel better. Ashley Stewart's Butterfly Bra is the bra that you will never want to take off. Visit AshleyStewart.com. That's AshleyStewart.com to see what the hype is all about. Did you know with QuickView at home over-the-counter COVID-19 tests, you can get rapid results in just 10 minutes in the privacy of your home? You can pick one up over-the-counter at your local retailer or online, and testing is easy. As we're preparing to gather with friends and family over the next few weeks, taking the necessary precautions to stay healthy is really important. With at-home tests, you can get your results faster, and you don't even have to get out of your pajamas. If you can, it's probably a good idea to keep a few on hand. Whether you're feeling under the weather, seeing a loved one, returning from a trip, or just want to check your COVID-19 status, it's always a good idea to test with QuickView at home over-the-counter COVID-19 test. Take 10 minutes, take charge. Visit quickviewathome.com. 
for FDA emergency use authorization only. Watch HBO Max's new comedy series, The Sex Lives of College Girls, now streaming. From the ever clever Mindy Kaling comes a sex positive comedy about four relatable, diverse young women who stumble toward adulthood as they dive into new experiences like naked parties, airbrushed abs, and caution tape dresses, refusing to be shamed for any of it. No rules, no regrets. Watch The Sex Lives of College Girls, now streaming only on HBO Max. So another thing that you talk a lot about on your channel is the use of affirmations. And I think that is also something that more people are using as a part of their like self-care routines and like really taking care of themselves. Can you say a little bit more about what affirmations are and like when we need to use them? Absolutely. If you look at the etymology of the word af to from Latin and firm, firm. So to firm, it's when you need to acknowledge something in your life. And I find that we need to speak affirmations over our lives, Dr. Joy. We need to define who we are and what we want because we have an entire world that is happy to tell us who to be, how to be, where to go, how to dress, what dress size we should have, what man we should have, what kind of house, what kind of car. But affirmations for us can cement, this is what we're doing today. I will be strong today. I will not have fear. I will live my best life. I will honor my body. So I love just being like, okay, all this craziness is happening around me, but let me tell you what I will and will not do. And It allows for you to stand as a woman of character, a woman of integrity. We've all heard that saying that people who stand for nothing will fall for nothing. And I think there's nothing better to stand for than standing for who I am and what I want in my life and what I will and will not do and what I will and will not allow in my life. So, Olivia, how do we take care not to dip into toxic positivity with affirmations? Because I feel like there's like a fine line. (laughs) (laughs) When I think about toxic positivity, I'm thinking about these things that we tell people like everything will be fine or like there's a reason for this storm. Things that kind of separate you from like actually feeling the pain maybe of an experience, which is necessary, right? We yeah. already talked about like the joy and the pain that exists because we're human. Yes. I mean, sometimes I feel like you have to be careful with affirmations because sometimes they go too far in pushing you from experiencing the reality of a situation. It's so interesting because I actually purchased a set of affirmation cards and, and a few of them, I'm like, this is crazy. I'm not saying this, <laughs> right? It's like, it's, I'm absolutely not <laughs> saying this. I think your affirmations need to come from your spirit. Mm -hmm. It's something that is resolute and divine, if you ask me, based on your life experience. It's got to be rooted in truth, your truth. So Mm -hmm. as you're looking for affirmations, I actually invite us to look within. I invite us for everything to not do so much of looking without, but more within. What are things you need to affirm for yourself? That's where all of my affirmations come from. They come from my life experience and knowing what it felt like to have experienced a certain thing that likely was negative and saying, I will not allow myself to be used. I will not enter into a relationship in which I am not honored and cherished. You know what I mean? It's like what I will and will not do based on my life experience. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's where I believe they should come from is from your spirit. Yeah, and to your point, I think a lot of people sometimes get turned off by words of affirmation and like using affirmations because it does feel kind of cheesy. But I think a lot of times that cheesiness comes because we're trying to borrow other people's words, right? As opposed to what we really feel like we need affirmed for ourselves that really only we can give us. Dr. Joy, 
ta-da, period, right yeah. there. That's it. That's what I'm saying. I've created them myself. And if you want to say them or use your own words, which I invite people to do on my channel, like this is what I'm saying, but say mm -hmm. it in your own way. Got it. So you've already offered us a beautiful journal exercise for how to close out 2021. Are there additional journal prompts that you would offer for how to usher in 2022? I would invite us to ask ourselves, and it's similar to one of the things I said, but mm -hmm. What are you doing here on earth? And that's broad. But I believe a lot of us get disconnected with our purpose living in this life. There are things that happen between us being a hopeful five-year-old little girl and a 25, 35, 45, 55 year old person. And I invite us to ask ourselves, what are we really doing with our time? What are we doing with our resources? And is there something different that we want to be doing? Because for me, it continues to come back to, I know this being redundant, this part of it, living our best, most free lives ever. So I think in that, I would invite us to do an inventory of our relationships, the company we keep, Dr. Joy? Are there some new people that we want to invite in our lives? I would definitely write that down. For me, I remember about three years ago, writing down that I wanted to expand my circle, that I wanted to connect with more entrepreneurial women. And I just wrote it down as something that I wanted. And after writing it down, it heightened my awareness that it was something that I really wanted to attract in my life. And then when various people began to show up and engage me who were entrepreneurial women, I was like, this is what I was writing about several years ago. So I just invite us to, to lean into writing things that are on our spirit about things we want to attract in our lives in every area, career, relationship, even if you're married, if there you can, we can always have a better relationship. So career, relationships, being a parent, if you are a businesswoman, if you are a church leader, if you're a civic leader, there are always areas in which we can improve ourselves. Thank you for that. So the other space that many of us are in right now is, okay, what do we give to the people we love in our lives? And so I feel like you've given us this beautiful gift to talk about, like journaling and affirmation. But for people in our lives who maybe are into this or we think this would be a great practice for them to adopt, do you have favorite like journals or brands that you really love that you think we should have our eye on? Michaels has mm. in their arts and crafts section, they got sketchbooks. And they've got mm -hmm. some journals. I got some freeform sketch pads that are bound that I use mm -hmm. for my journals from Michaels. I get a lot of gifts that are just blank journals. And I know they get them from Marshalls and Home Goods and all that stuff there. And I think those work just fine. This does not have to be, mm -hmm. this is not golf or even Pilates or yoga where this has to be an expensive venture, right? We can go to Marshalls and Home Goods, do or anywhere you go and just get you. And let me tell you something. There have been times when I have been traveling and very, very rarely though, when I don't have a journal with me, where I will just have to get a notepad from the hotel or just mm -hmm. a regular three-wing binder. Like the whole writing process, you know, I don't want there to be any barriers to it, Dr. Joy. Mm -hmm. Whatever you can get your hands on to write and get it out, do it. Mm -hmm. So Olivia, tell us where we can stay connected with you if you would like to share your website as well as any social media handles that you'd like to share. Absolutely. So freedomatthemat.com is going to be the point of entry for where our videos from YouTube are housed. We do have a YouTube channel. I invite everybody, please, to subscribe. It's free. And we offer affirmations, meditations, mindfulness exercises, and yoga. And the whole premise with Freedom at the Mat is to make wellness accessible to everyone globally. But also, most importantly, we know that it is hard for us to prioritize me time. So our content, we promise, is all between two minutes and 30 minutes. So freedomatthemat.com 
is where I would love for you all to spend some time and then subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Now, of course, we're on Instagram and Facebook, but the core is really the YouTube content. That's really where the core is. Well, we are also Instagram, freedomatthemat.com, as well as Facebook, Freedom at the Mat. Perfect. Well, we will be sure to include all of that in our show notes. Thank you so much for sharing with us today, Olivia, your beautiful conversation as well as the journal exercises. Thank you so much. And I again, I'm so grateful to you for what you've created. And I honor every single woman in the world. And I hope that together we support each other in becoming the best most free women possible, mentally free, emotionally free, socially free, so that we can really live life in the way it was intended for us to live. Indeed. Thank you for that. I'm so glad Olivia was able to share her expertise with us today. To learn more about her work or to check out her YouTube page with other great exercises, visit the show notes at therapyforblackgirls.com slash session 239. And don't forget to text two of your girls right now and tell them to check out the episode as well. If you're looking for a therapist in your area, be sure to check out our therapist directory at therapyforblackgirls.com slash directory. And if you want to continue digging into this topic or just be in community with other sisters, come on over and join us in the sister circle. It's our cozy corner of the internet designed just for black women. You can join us at community.therapyforblackgirls.com. Thank y'all so much for joining me again this week. I look forward to continuing this conversation with you all real soon. Take good care. Ladies, have you ever wondered what the perfect bra feels like? Ashley Stewart has a bra that's so supportive and comfortable, you won't want to remove it as soon as you get home. Their patented butterfly bra collection offers technology specifically designed to provide support and style for women. Ashley Stewart's butterfly bras boast a double back band to not only provide superior support in the front, but an overall smoothing effect in the back. With four styles to choose from in fashionable colors and available in cup sizes D through H, Ashley Stewart's butterfly bra is the bra that you will never want to take off. Visit AshleyStewart.com to feel as good as you look. When it comes to building a working world that is diverse, equal, inclusive, and fair, We've come a long way, and yet we're just getting started. Now Glassdoor helps to create a more transparent workplace with tools that encourage open conversations among employees as well as job seekers. Get the inside scoop about salaries and company culture and join an open conversation in a trusted community that can help empower your best career. Learn how they're helping to create a more transparent workplace for all of us at glassdoor.com slash progress. I used to think my skin goals were unattainable because there are so many products and it's often overwhelming to know where to start, but thankfully I found Curology. To get started, you answer some questions online and send in a couple of selfies. Next, they match you with a licensed dermatology provider and if it's a good fit, you'll get a customized prescription cream to address your unique skin concerns shipped right to your door. I've been using the formula for almost a year now and have definitely noticed fewer lines and very few breakouts. Take control of acne, dark spots, breakouts, or whatever your unique concerns may be with a powerful skincare treatment made for you today. Go to Curology.com slash TBG for a free 30-day trial. Just pay for shipping and handling. That's C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash TBG to unlock your free 30-day trial. See Curology.com for all the details.